Welcome back. Um, in this episode, we're gonna work a bit on the scamp. Because that's what we're gonna, we are, we are, we are. Yes, I know everyone's waiting for the Frank video. That's in progress still, but I've got to do some odd jobs on this. Uh, I'm spending 70% of the time on Frank, 30% time on all the other projects to try and keep things moving forward at some point. Um, because again, I don't know how long I'm gonna have this unit. I need to get these things sorted. So, one, we need to get all the crap off because it just turns into a big bench when you've got a little car laying around. I'm sure you, everybody else suffers from that as well sometimes. <sighs> Where were we? I actually started and I didn't film it um, playing with a fuel tank, I think, and I've actually nearly made a fuel tank. If you've seen some of my pictures online, I'll try and show the fuel tank at the end of this video being fitted. Um, also, I wanted knobbly tyres, the look I'm going to go for, and then when it gets repainted, um, a bit of a Jurassic Park theme, because I'm into that, and the daughter is. Um, I want knobbly tyres, and you can get knobbly tyres in 10 inch, but these brakes that we all changed over to, uh, the 8.4 inch discs, which everybody knows pretty much technically doesn't, you can't fit 10 inch wheels. You need to go to the smaller 7.5 inch discs, 7.9, 7.9, anyway, and you can get aftermarket calipers. So basically, I found a deal and I managed to get some unbranded calipers and discs and everything. Um, so we need to pull the front hubs off and I've started doing one side already. Got to fit all the brakes back again, bleed it, and readjust the handbrake, which we've never properly sorted, and then brakes will be okay. And then we've got some welding to do as well, which we started cutting out, do you remember? We lifted out. And then, yeah, I want us to try and wrap to line the floor and underside. I don't think it's all going to get done in this video. But if we can get the brakes back on again and some welding done, I'll be quite pleased. If we get a fuel tank back in, that'd be major epic and get this running again. All right, well, the first thing to do is tidy up some of this mess. Plenty of other videos online if you want to check out how these all these brakes work, converting them from basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to convert from 12 inch wheels to 10 inch wheels. 10 inch wheels are a lot smaller, so obviously they don't fit over the brakes and the calipers. Have your standard 8.4 inch discs and standard Leighton Mini calipers like we got here. Uh, so basically, you can get a kit, you get new, all the main mini places sell them, all different makes, all. Um, so these are smaller calipers, but they bolt onto the 8.4 inch flan, uh, hubs, so you don't have to look for the old Mini Cooper S hubs or anything like that. Uh, you then convert over to the smaller discs, obviously, because you can't fit the bigger discs, which that's the original ones, um, where you've got the drive flange that bolts to the disc like that. And then these newer ones, these smaller discs. This is for the other side, obviously. I've already bolted this on here. Come with the studs built in, and then you have a drive flange that goes over the studs, which the drive shaft then. That's do. There, anyway. I have a spare drive flange somewhere. Hopefully, I've got a spare one for the other side. Anyway, let's get this caliper bolted up. For whatever reason, when you buy pads, I don't know where I buy them from. They never come with split pins, but luckily I've got a split pin kit and uh, they held them with split pins. Okay on there um, yeah, as always when you wound the uh, old brake pipe onto the caliper from the other one as you saw it doesn't it's not tapped the same it's not surprisingly so basically it locks in a different position and gets tight so obviously what you need to do is you can't really have a kinky thing like that you need to loosen up 
the fitting through the uh, subframe there so you can rotate that just so there's no twisting in the pipe it's not ideal so we'll have to loosen that off as soon as i've got the bleeder brakes anyway it's not an issue and i still need to put the pads in but i did remember do you remember there was a circuit missing on the end of this drive shaft or cv joint um and my dad gave me one at the nec sh show it was in an envelope it said circlip on it and uh yeah i wonder where that envelope is now Okay, that side done, clips in. I bled it a little bit by just leaving the bleed nipple open and it, gravity or whatever does its work. Um, but we leave it off the ground this side, we get an axle stand the other side, get the wheel off the other side, get the other brakes all on, then we can give it another good bleed. That's the idea. Then I just need 10 inch wheels, which I have got somebody that's got me some reserve. So uh, nothing too special, but it will fit with the look once they're pasted, painted. Then we need to get down to vintage tyres as well to uh, get some tyres fitted. Do a little close up, a little close up. So yeah. That's the uh, 8.4 inch disc setup. I think these are 7.9 discs. Keeping them lovely and clean. As you can see, they are smaller. Maybe even smaller than 7.9. Anyway, so that's how they go on there. You then have a dry plan, so I'm guessing design and it's easy to remake these at the time uh, yeah so that then we'll clean that up that goes onto there and it's held on by four little screws but obviously the studs take a lot of the strain as well and the clamping force of the wheel once it's on there and then yeah that goes on there walkabilly charged this battery charge is working all right amazon chinese bit of engine shake over there still got to build another engine steady i don't know how many times we have to redo these brakes but it seems to be a lot i still need to just twist that pipe a little bit i've got to get to the nut because it's very tight that side which means mostly getting the battery box out so I've tweaked it a little bit, it'll be fine for now for bleeding. Come back, got new shocks to fit, but I also want to stone chip all the underside and wrap to that at some point as well. So let's see what's next on the list of jobs. Yeah, split pins to go through the hub nuts as well, but we'll get, wait till it's on the wheels and then we can tighten them up and torque them up correctly. Um, yeah, I should have used a new copper washer on the fitting, but uh, we'll see if it leaks. Um, it's only just been on there. Anyway. Put a new one on if you're going to do it, don't copy me.
Welcome back. I think it's been about two weeks since that first, that little bit that you just saw. Two, two and a half weeks. Sometimes you just can't get your head into gear. I do apologise for the noise again. Uh, paint shop guy's next door. Fair enough, he's working. It's, it's something you've got you to earn a dingo dollar on you. So, uh, yeah, I might have to uh, overdub this, man. I said, let me know if uh, you need that. So, we've got, I've been working a few little bits back home. Um, I've got my first version of the Alley fuel tank to try in there and dry run the lines and everything, see what's going on there. We've got a welder um, that I've got sent um, that I need to weld some of the scamp on, but also try and see and review it. So, it might sound like a bit like a review in that section. Um, that's because it's going to be used. That video footage, Madison will add that to another video later, which is just a review of the welder. Um, yeah, we've got about an hour and a half. We'll try and see what we can get done. There's Frank sitting there, yes. But my mind's a mess at the moment. I need to be focused to be in the right frame of mind, so we are going to do that. But maybe next week. But anyway, I still want to get this on. So I've got an event in August I want to try and take this to. I can trailer it there even if it runs, but it'd be nice to actually get it looking a bit smarter. There it does. Anyway. Alright, let's see if this sounding noise you can hear from next door bothers anyone. Okay, I don't know. I can't. The, the sound is going next door. So, let me get round and show you what I've done. Oh god, you can hear me, Mass, and we'll, we'll overdub this or something. So, my first attempt at a fuel tank. Don't zoom in, the world's a crap. But I've done it a few times and there seems to be no leaks at the moment. Uh, we've still got to add a little vent yet somewhere. I've got one on order. I've printed up some TPU rubber, slush rubber. They're flexible, uh, plasticky stuff. Tabs to go on there. I've just noticed that I've mounted this one too high because this is what happens when you make stuff and don't measure properly and you're making it not near the car. And then I've also just seen that this fitting is quite close. Obviously the old seatbelt used to mount here, but we're going to move that. I'm not quite sure where we're going to put the seatbelt yet. Uh, and now putting that tab on. But anyway, that goes in there. That's looking quite cool. I'm going to DA it all off and we're going to, I'm going to try and map to line it to match the floor when we wrap to the floor as well. <coughs> That's the plan. So that covers up my wells. We're going to have a mirror image of one over there. Hopefully, with slightly better welding, I learned quite a lot welding this one up. Ordered ourselves a uh, fuel filter. Gonna mount this in the middle because I think that'd be cool to mount it in the middle because then I can then, it could be a filter for both tanks. Um, so that's why we've got a T there. I've 3D printed up a little mount. Hold that there, um, counter sunk those, so basically we've got some roof nuts through the floor, I'm hoping that can get screwed to the floor. That'll be over there. We've got this fuel pipe now, which will go on to here. I also printed that some little spaces that will go through those so it doesn't actually clamp completely to the floor, you know, it, it, it crushes it a little bit, but anyway, that's the idea. Also printed up a something to do on the floor there, clamp the pipes down. I don't even know if we use that, but we'll see. So we've got all the handbrake area and everything here. I've designed up some new seat belt seat mounts, but I haven't even tried to cut them yet. So yeah, let's see if we can play about with this pipe work. And um, I've got some other bits as well. Turn up some other fittings. And I've got uh, just a bar connector that goes on. That, well, I'll just go join up to the carburetor eventually. Um, it'd be nice to go all the way there. But anyway, let's uh, time lapse it and uh, try.
yep, you guessed it. It's one of those, one of those jobs that escalates. I thought I'd fit under the seat belts. It didn't. I thought I can adjust the seat belts slightly by bending them. Then I thought, well, I might as well unbolt them. That was a pain. Ended up cutting all the heads off. This is bolted through the plate there, bolted through like a, a cross member underneath. Uh, so, but they're no captive nuts, so we might as well take the whole thing off. We can weld some captive seat belt points underneath. So when it drops back on again, it can all be lovely. Just, just a job after job, just like, you just keep redoing it, don't you? You've got to stop sometimes, but I don't. And then it leaves halfway through. Anyway, back to the fuel lights. way longer than I expected. Just made up this pipe, I haven't even bought the tank in yet. I was expecting to do some welding as well, I haven't even done that yet. My multicoloured fittings are everywhere, but hey, with a max power can't go wrong, can you? This is way oversized for the just a car retter. Um, but I can get some single clamps on there, I think. I'll print some single ones up. This might even tuck through the gear linkage there, like that, uh, the gear linkage handbrake into there to the front. This will be just tapped off for now until I get the second fuel tank sorted. But this is just again just to get the, the thing running again without having that big van tank there. Yes, this is less fuel, but once I've got the second one in, it's, it's, it's close. And it's gonna be fine for the journeys I need to do. Did notice, as I said, I've made the bracket wrong at the back there, so I need to try and trim that off and take that home. Run out of argon now, pissing about with all this. But anyway. <sighs> Let's make this last fuel line up while we've got it here. And then that gives us something to think about. I've made this a double bracket, not because I've got one, two fuel parts, but I've got some conduit running along here. I've got some electrical stuff to do with the seats at some point. Um, that will come in to play later. Oh, no clue what's for dinner, no clue. Okay, I've got to wrap this video up now, I think. I don't know how long it is, it's only a quick one. But I've got down here, I've done some work. It's been slow progress. It always is when you like leave a project for weeks or even months. Um, as we know, it's just, other people can cope better than others uh, sometimes. Yeah. It's just even getting the frame set, the mindset to actually even come down here sometimes. Uh, but anyway, I've got the fuel filter fitted, fuel line extended out to the front here, not done anything to the front yet. It's just a case of running it up now to the carb and putting one more fitting on, which we've got over here. And that'll just join up to the existing rubber pipe, a little short piece for the moment, or to the fuel pump, I suspect it isn't it? It's a mechanical fuel pump. Um, on these, uh, I need to modify that tank, take that back, move that bracket down. It's the benefit of aluminium, you can cut it off and redo it, as I found out a few times. And yeah, I don't think the seat will get in the way there. There's the seats there, that'll be good. We can always put some conduit or something, more protection on there. We'll just have to see how it goes. No fuel level gauge, but you need to have you looking through the top, don't you? All right. Lighting in this place is awful. Anyway, thanks for all the support. If you could hit the like button and the subscribe button, that would really help. Leave a comment, let me know what you're having for dinner, because again, always helps the algorithm. Google want to know what you've had for dinner. Don't they, Madison? Yeah, uh, no clue for tonight, absolutely no clue. We had a KFC last night, so does that count? I'll let you know that. We've got down here, done an hour's progress. We've got half an hour and a little bit. I need to just do some filming of this welder. Um, I was gonna try and do it on the scamp, but I've not got time, I just need to try and see if I can get it even plumbed in. We need to kick our ass and get down here more in the evenings while it's still a bit light and just at least once it starts raining it's even worse isn't it to try and get down. So yeah we'll try and get down in the evenings to at least get all the floor cleared. The other option is I've got it drivable, I can get it insured and never teed. I said old car so I don't even need to I don't think. Um, Got because I've got to sort out the tax because it's uh, not still registered as a historic and it should be so that's fine get that done. 
then get it back to the, the single garage at home where I can actually do the painting and the compressor because I haven't got a compressor down here yet. I need to bring it down, but it's a big compressor and I can't be asked. And... But it needs to. I've got the paint, I've got the Raptor liner. I still need to, Barry, I will get down to collect the wheels and other stuff. Honest, I will. My life is just a mess at the moment. Uh, but yeah, we're already nearly to run 10 inch wheels, so that's good. So yeah, next video, let's try and get some paint, get some colour on the inside of that because then we can get everything back inside and get the seats back in. That's the plan for that. And as well as the air ride on Frank. That's got to be done as well. And that's waiting there. I need to get on with that as well. I need to book a day off for that. Anyway, enough ramblings. I am rambling, but it's nice to see everyone. Uh, say hello. And uh, yeah, if you want to help me anyway, check out the description. Plenty of different ways to help me, but the main thing is just to watch it and uh, say hello. All right, till next time.